All right, so let's get to our example of how to use the variational method. And so I've chosen uh, a, a simple example to start with. We're going to think about a particle in one dimension, and the particle is going to be described by the Hamiltonian p squared over 2m plus 1 half m omega squared x squared. So it's in a quadratic potential, and I've drawn the potential there. And so we want to estimate the ground state energy for this quantum system. So that's our goal. Goal is to estimate E0. All right, now, you're probably saying to yourself, isn't that just the harmonic oscillator? I know what the ground state energy is. Uh, why are we doing this? And so here, it's just an example. And I want to imagine, again, that maybe we are not so good at solving differential equations. Um, so maybe, uh, maybe we know some quantum mechanics, um, but you know, we lost, uh, we can't remember anything about this particular example. And so we're going to try to use the variational method just to get an estimate of what that ground state energy might be. Okay, so, so, um, so we're going to assume that we don't know what the actual ground state wave function looks like. However, when we're making our guess, okay, so our, our, our job is we're going to guess the wave function or, or sort of guess some candidate wave functions. We're going to evaluate the expectation value of energy, and that's going to be our upper bound for the energy. Okay, now we're going to do this in a slightly more clever way than I presented in the basic video. And so the idea is that we want to not just consider possible states one at a time, we're actually going to consider a whole family of states. Okay, and so what I want to do is demonstrate this method where we're going to guess that uh, just a, as a trial state, this wave function psi of x equals a over x squared plus b squared. Okay, so that's my guess. Why did I guess that? Well, I noticed that the potential was small down at zero, and then it became large. And I know that classically, an object will bounce back and forth um, and not get out to infinity. And so I chose a wave function that died off um, something like this. I chose my wave function to die off for large values of x or negative x. Okay. Um, so let's let's apply the method. Okay. So one thing you'll notice though is that this is not just one wave function. Um, it is a whole infinite family of wave functions. And so we're actually going to calculate the expectation value of h for all of them, and then consider, you know, out of all of those values, all of those values have to be bigger than the ground state energy. And so we're going to take the minimum of all of those values. And that will be our best, um, our best approximation to the ground state, our closest upper bound for the ground state. Okay, so we will vary, we will consider um, varying this parameter b. Okay, now the, we could also, the, the parameter a is also a parameter, um, but actually we're going to be able to determine that in terms of the parameter b. So maybe just stop the video for a moment now and think to yourself, how can we determine the parameter a in terms of the parameter b? If you want, you could even go ahead and do that. Okay, so hopefully you've had a t chance to think about that. I really encourage you, actually, when I when I tell you to think about something, um, it's probably very worthwhile to just spend a, a minute um, trying to think through it for yourself before I tell you the answer. Um, so in the end, uh, how do we determine the, the constant A? Well, we do that by requiring that this wave function is normalized, okay? So obviously A is going to change the, the height of our function, um, but to have a properly normalized wave function, we want the integral of the square of the wave function to be one. Okay, so normalization
that will require that the integral of psi of x squared from minus infinity to infinity dx is equal to 1. And, oh, that slid over there. I hope that wasn't over there for a long time. Um, and so that then requires that if we, so we, we just have to plug this in. We, we do some integrals. I'm going to assume that everyone is really good at integrals so um, that we can, we can do that and then figure out what value of a um, will be required so that this is satisfied. And it turns out to be a equals 2b cubed over pi. Okay, so thanks, Wolf from Alpha. Um, next, so we, we have our, our trial state. It still depends on a parameter b. And so our next step, so that was like step one. Step two of our general method is going to be to calculate psi h psi, okay? And so this is the next place that I would like you to stop the video. And I want you to think about, given this wave function and given this Hamiltonian, how would you actually go about calculating this object, psi um, h psi, the expectation value of the Hamiltonian? Um, so take a couple of minutes. You can either try to do that completely or just at least set it up, think about how you would do it, and, and then come back. Okay, so welcome back. Um, how do we do this? Well, we're going to use the fact that this is this is one of these one-dimensional particle systems, and this expectation value is the inner product between psi and the operator h acting on psi. So it's the inner product between two states. And if you remember, then in general, we had a formula for the inner product between two different states in terms of their wave functions. And so that was going to be equal to the integral over all of x of the complex conjugate of the wave function for the bra state times the wave function for the cat state. And so now in our case, what we have is psi as the bra state. Okay, so we have psi star of x. Um, and then our ket state is this state h on psi. Okay, so now we have to think if the wave function for psi is this thing, what is the wave function for h acting on psi? Okay, and we, we have a look at h, and so there's one term that has p squared in it, and so we're going to be acting on the wave on the state with p a couple of times, and in the second term we're acting on the state with x a couple of times, and so we remember that acting on the state with p is equivalent to acting on the wave function with h bar over i times the derivative, the x derivative, um, and acting with x on the state, the x operator, is just equivalent to acting, just multiplying the wave function by x. Okay, and so then um, the wave function for h acting on psi, what it then ends up being is, so 1 over 2m, and then h bar over i, d by dx squared, that's our p squared, and then plus a half m, omega squared, x squared, and then acting on psi of x again. Let me draw that. Okay. Okay, so that is the integral that we need to evaluate. And now we can, now we can just do this. Um, so we just want to plug in psi of x is a over x squared plus b squared. That's our value for a. And again, I'm going to assume that we could just do all of these integrals. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit of work. I'm not going to do it here, but I'll, I'll write down the answer. So the answer turns out to be relatively simple. It's a, integrals that we can ultimately do analytically or you know, using a table or with Wolfram Alpha. Um, so we get 
1 quarter h bar squared over b squared m. That's from the first term. And then from the second term, we get 1 half m omega squared b squared. Okay? And so, so that's not just one value. Um, that's a different value for every value of b. Okay, so it's, so it's interesting. Um, what we know is that whatever b we choose, if we were to evaluate this object, then that number would be always greater than the ground state energy. Okay, let's have a look at how this function looks on a graph as a function of b. Uh, I'll do that over here. So, okay. So we'll assume b is positive because it's squared there in the denominator. And so what we get is, sorry, b is on the x-axis and on the y-axis is the expectation value of the energy for the state psi. So that's, that's our expectation value that we calculated. And so the function looks like this. Okay, so there's a 1 over b squared term um, that blows up when b goes to 0. And then there's a b squared term that blows up as b goes to infinity. And so there's clearly a minimum. And so that means that there's this one particular value of b um, that is going to give us the best, the closest upper bound on our ground state energy. Okay, so what we want to do now is minimize over b. Okay, and what we find uh, if we use basic calculus to minimize that function is that e phi min. Okay, so you should maybe take a few minutes to try that. Um, it works out to square root of 2 over 2 times h bar omega. So that's numerically approximately equal to 0 0.707 h bar omega. Okay, now you probably aren't super impressed because you happen to know that the exact result for the ground state energy is E zero equals half h bar omega, 0 0.5 h bar omega. Okay, but let me remind you, if we didn't know that already, um, and someone just presented us with this problem, um, then going in, we really don't know anything about the ground state energy. And so having this, this value, this upper bound, 0 0.707 h bar omega, um, is actually not too bad. It, um, gives us some some idea um, what the ground state energy might be. Um, we've only tried one type of function and now we can go on and try more general functions. And so we will, in that way, if we try a more general function, we're going to find a lower um, a lower value for our bound. And so we could we could sort of keep trying until um, we have a hard time getting it any lower and then we might think that we are getting really close to the actual value. Okay, so in the next video I'll kind of summarize this general approach and then we'll send you off to try some examples on your own.